In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we look to the Gospel of Luke to see what the Spirit has to say to the Church. This Gospel lesson follows what we now know as the Annunciation. Mary traveled several miles to see Elizabeth. She went to witness Elizabeth's pregnancy and to also share her good news. But most of all, I believe, she went to see Elizabeth to be affirmed in her faith. Something really amazing had happened and Mary wanted to make sure that she wasn't just dreaming. She wanted to be assured that this amazing thing was something she could handle in her life. I'm sure Mary had difficulty trying to determine exactly what to make of what had happened. Surely anyone would. She could not and would not share this experience with just any person. She needed to share what had happened with someone she could trust. And so, she chose Elizabeth, her cousin. Now, this is a wonderful story because it is an authentically human story. It is in our nature to share special events and special experiences with people who are special in our lives. There are certain experiences that I only share with certain people. And I think I can safely say that there are certain experiences that you only share with certain people. These people are the special people in our lives. Elizabeth was Mary's cousin. But Elizabeth was also a special person in Mary's life. Mary traveled a considerable distance to see Elizabeth and to share her good news. I can imagine that on her way, her heart raced and her thoughts skipped about in her mind and spirit. She was not sure that what had happened could be completely trusted. But if it were true, she could sense that it was news which would change the world forever. Imagine how you would feel if you were carrying inside you the knowledge that something was going to happen that would change the world forever and that you were going to be an important part of that change. It must have been, it had to have been an overwhelming feeling. I'm often deeply moved when I discover how my Christian witness has impacted the lives of others. And in many cases, much to my surprise. Several years ago, a man living in Columbus, Ohio, did an internet search, located the website I used to promote my books, and emailed me to request a copy of a sermon he heard me preach many years ago, in 1986 to be exact, but don't try to do the numbers on that one. It was a Good Friday sermon. What was so amazing was the fact that he remembered the title of the sermon and the substance of the message. In his email, he told me that it was a sermon that had helped him through many difficult times in his life. Had I known when I preached that sermon that it would have the kind of effect on him that it had, and would have the kind of influence in his life 
in such a powerful way, I would have been too overwhelmed to utter a single word. Mary must have been overwhelmed by the news that she had just received. When I was just a high school student, I made an off-the-cuff comment to a classmate. He claims to this very day that I told him he was wasting his potential by not doing his homework and by skipping classes. And to this very day, I do not remember making that comment. I remember him as a very bright person and a person who was wasting his intellectual gifts. But I cannot, for the sake of my life, remember that particular conversation. As a result of what he claims I said on that day, he enrolled in vocational school, studied electronics, went to college, became an electrical engineer, and then went to medical school. He is now a well-respected primary care physician. He sends me a Christmas card every year with a picture of his children on it. And I don't know how he figures out how I've moved from place to place, but he always has the right address. Had I known that what I said on that day would have such a profound effect on his life, I would have been too overwhelmed to utter a single word. Mary must have been overwhelmed by the news she had just received. The news of the coming of Christ still has the power to change the world. It has power because it reminds us that God has considered our condition and has taken an active role in the affairs of humankind to change things for the better. It has power because it reminds us that God continues to take an active role in our lives. Through the power of God, Fear can be transformed into faith. Cowardice can change to courage. And hope unborn can be ushered into the world. Through the power of God, we can become a new people, a new parish, a new community, a new nation for all the world to see. Through the power of God, miracles can still happen. As we know, Elizabeth was soon to be the mother of John the baptizer. She was six months pregnant. As Mary entered Elizabeth's home, Elizabeth was filled with the spirit of prophecy. And in that prophetic moment, she declared, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. In this statement, Elizabeth applauds and encourages Mary's faith. Some people are blessed with the gift of encouragement. If you have the gift of encouragement, you should give thanks to God every day. If you do not have the gift of encouragement, you should pray that you might receive it. For the encouragement of faith is a very, very good work. When I was a graduate student, living and studying in Atlanta, uh, the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss, a well-known pastor from Cleveland, Ohio, 
came to preach a series of revival sermons at the Union Baptist Church. I went to one of the services with a few of my classmates. In the middle of his sermon, he said something that I shall never forget. He said, we should leave a little drop of honey everywhere we go. Not only have I remembered those words and used them in sermons, but they have given me a rule for living that I have tried to apply every day of my life. When we encourage others, we affirm them in their faith and we bless their lives. To encourage someone's faith is to leave that little drop of honey. It will soften the bitterness of life's rough edges. Jeremy Taylor, a 17th century English priest, once said, faith is the root of all blessings. Believe and you shall be saved. Believe and you will be satisfied. Believe and you will be truly comforted. When we encourage the faith of others, we help to plant and nurture the root of all blessings. When we encourage faith, we direct others to the path that leads to a larger and a better life. If you want to know the depths of God's love for you, have faith, believe in God, have confidence in Christ, and see how much the Father wants to fill your life with good things. In her joy and excitement, Mary recited one of the great prayers of 1 Samuel, known as Hannah's Prayer. We have also come to know these words as the Magnificat. In this prayer, we find an acknowledgement of God's favor and expressions of joy and praise. Here, God alone is the object of her praise and the center of her joy. We would do well to remember in our daily lives that God should be the object of our praise and God alone should be the center of our joy. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, we thank you for Mary and for her faith. We also thank you for Elizabeth and for her gift of encouragement. Bless us that we too might have the gifts of faith and encouragement, that others might see how much the Father wants to fill their lives with good things. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, amen.